Before the age of dinosaurs, the world belonged to strange creatures with sails on their backs, sabers in their jaws, and armor plates fused into living shields. This is the Permian, a planet of extremes, and a battleground where hunters like Demetrodon and Inostrancevia stalk the armored herbivore Scutosaurus. Tonight, we hunt with them. The Permian period stretched from about 299 to 252 million years ago. Continents had collided into Pangaea, a supercontinent so vast it created baking deserts, seasonal monsoons, and interior climates that swung from drought to flash flood. Life pushed into new forms, early synapsids. Our distant relatives shared the land with pariasaurs, decinodonts, and gorgonopsids. But this story isn't one moment in time. It's a saga unfolding across millions of years. Demetrodon rose earlier in the Permian, while Inostrancevia and Scutosaurus arrived later. They never met, but together they framed the rise and apex of Permian land predators. In the early Permian, floodplains and river systems stitched through semi-arid basins. Here lurked Demetrodon, a powerfully built synapsid, with a tall neural spine sail. Not a dinosaur, millions of years too early, but a distant cousin to mammals. What was the sail for? Likely a mix of thermoregulation, soaking up morning sun, dumping heat at noon, and display a billboard for intimidation and courtship. Up front, Zephyrdon teeth, blade-like, serrated, sheared flesh. Demetrodon's skull was deep and robust. Its bite could puncture, crush and slice, making short work of fish, amphibians and fellow tetrapods unlucky enough to be ambushed. Take a closer look at Demetrodon's skull, a deep, laterally compressed wedge built to seize and shred. Behind the eye, a single temporal fenestra anchors huge jaw muscles the signature of synapsids, our distant lineage. Those muscles funnel through the skull and clamp a dentary-articular jaw joint with crushing force. Along the jaws, heterodont teeth, caniniform giants up front, backed by ziphodont, blade-like, serrated, marginal teeth. Each serration acts like a row of tiny knives, letting Demetrodon puncture then saw as it whips its head side to side. That head shake isn't drama. It's biomechanics. Serrations bite. The long tooth crowns track like a bread knife through flesh. Shift forward to the late Permian, far to the north on the great Russian plains. Enter Scutosaurus, a pariasaur the size of a small car. Barrel-chested, with pillar-like limbs and a skull ridged with bony knobs. Along the jaws sit leaf-shaped, multi-cusped teeth, perfect for shearing fibrous plants like seed ferns and cycads. The crowns create scissor-like edges. As the jaws close, the teeth slice and mash, leaving wear facets from heavy oral processing. It carried a lattice of osteoderms, armor plates embedded in the skin. Herbivore, yes, but hardly defenseless. A low center of gravity and shearing leaf teeth helped it grind tough vegetation. When danger closed in, Scutosaurus used mass, armor, and a bulldozer shove to survive. In herds, they likely moved between water and forage, wary of open ground. In a world tipping toward climatic instability, bulk and armor were strategies. Eat a lot, carry protection, stick together. Now meet the Gorgonopsids, the saber-toothed Therapsids. At their pinnacle stood in Ostrensevia, a lithe, long-legged predator with a skull lined by daggerlink canines. Unlike Demetrodon's low sprawling power, Inostrensevia was built for active pursuit. Cursorial by Permian standards. 
with forward-facing eyes for depth perception and a strong slicing bite. Sabres aren't for breaking bone. They're for precision killing. The most likely strategy? Target soft tissue in the neck and throat, then retreat and bleed the prey. Against armored herbivores, openings were few. The throat, inner limbs, and belly where plates thinned. Keeping downwind as dusk cooled the Permian steppe. In a Strancevia would shadow the herd just beyond their vision cone, using low conifer scrub and horsetail thickets as cover, while it sized up a limping adult or straggling juvenile. Then launch in a measured loping sprint to the flat. Slash once at the inner thigh to cripple vessels and tendons. Veer out before the bulldozer shove could land. Repeat with shallow belly cuts to bleed the target. And, when the faltering victim finally staggered, drive in with a swift, surgical throat strike that finished the kill in seconds. The Permian closes with the greatest mass extinction in Earth's history, the Great Dying. Around 252 million years ago, Climate chaos, volcanic cataclysm, oceans turning hostile. Over 90% of marine species and approximately 70% of land vertebrate species vanish. Demetrodon had already passed from the stage. Inostrancevia and Scutosaurus are swept away in the final act. Yet from the survivors, other therapsids, early archosaurs, evolution writes new chapters. First, the age of dinosaurs, and much later, us. We marvel at Permian predators, yet the fiercest came millions of years after. Us, no armor, no sabers, only ideas, industry, and a destructive nature that fells forests, acidifies oceans, and drives species to silence. Power makes us the apex. Choice decides whether we stay destroyers, or become guardians. If you enjoyed this journey before the dinosaurs, like, subscribe, and tell me which Permian creature you want to meet next.